These villagers in western Cambodia have gathered to receive new weapons in their daily fight against malaria. They're being given bed nets that are doused with slow-release insecticide. If used properly, they should be able to kill mosquitoes for several years. They've proven to be effective, but they're not a silver bullet against the disease. Making matters worse is an even greater threat. There's increasing evidence that parasites of the most deadly strain of malaria, called Plasmodium falciparum, are developing drug resistance. Scientists from around the world have come here to determine how and why this is happening. Chip, chip my. Dr. Mark Fakuda is leading one of the studies for a group known as AFRIMS, a U.S. military research unit. This local teacher is typical of the findings. Like at least a third of the patients Good. in the study, Good. he's still That's positive right. for malaria after four days of treatment. It may not sound like much, but it's okay. significant. Good. As one would expect, parasites to clear in perhaps two days, 48 hours or so. What we're noticing here in this site particularly is that the mean time for parasite clearance is between 60 and 65 hours. And we're concerned that this is a harbinger for early resistance that might later translate into the drugs being ineffective to achieve a cure. This is a serious concern because it has happened before. The best drug against falciparum malaria used to be chloroquine, but over a 30-year period it was rendered largely ineffective as the parasites became increasingly resistant to it. The next drug was defeated in half that time. In both cases, the resistance began here in western Cambodia and spread as far as Africa, where 90% of malaria's victims live. Now the drugs being used are called ACTs, combination therapies based on the compound artemisinin. As good as they are, the warning signs of resistance are now appearing again. Those are our final line of defense at present, and we don't have any really new drugs on the horizon. So if we lose this drug, uh, things become, at least in the short to medium term, quite serious in terms of malaria because we will have lost our best drug. To combat the spread of resistance, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is funding a containment project administered by Cambodia's government and the World Health Organization. Key to its success is finding out how and why the parasites are developing a tolerance to the ACTs. A trip to the local market provides clues. Shoppers come here not only for fruit and vegetables, but also for medication from private pharmacies that have been here for years. We accompany Dr. Prudence Hamade of the Malaria Consortium, one of the NGOs working in the area, to see how anti-malarial pills are being prescribed. Uh, this is very interesting, talking to this uh, private medicine seller. He has two varieties of medicine for malaria, for falciparum malaria. One is malarine, which is the, what is social marketed by Population Services International. This drug is correct and it's got clear instructions inside as to how to take the drug in the three days that you have to take it. But it, it's possible that patients already cut it up and only take it till they're feeling better. This is the whole problem that we find in the private sector that uh, patients are not getting the correct dose, not getting the correct combination, and this is going to lead to drug resistance developing very rapidly unless it can be controlled. The Cambodian government is aware of the problems in the private sector. It has banned the sale of monotherapies, single drugs that are easy for parasites to adapt to, but they're still readily available on the open market. Counterfeit drugs are also commonplace here. The country's top malaria official says a crackdown is imminent. We will deploy this 200, more than 200 Jesse police from the city up to the district level. So uh, I think maybe we can uh, uh, reduce the problem of the counterfeit and also of the private practitioner as well. But even if these efforts are successful, there are other challenges. Migrant workers pass through here to work the fields and build roads. 
they often don't have bed nets or access to adequate health care, making them more likely to catch malaria and spread resistance. To stem the tide, say some advocates, spending on global malaria programs needs to be quadrupled to at least $4 billion a year. And we need that money because uh, without it, we will not be able to contain this resistance. And if it gets to Africa, then there will be an enormous problem for both Africa to face, but the global community to actually fund the consequences of that resistance. If those resistant malaria strains do take hold and spread to Africa, the results could be catastrophic. This with a disease that already kills one child every 30 seconds. Gary Stryker for World Focus.